Peter Beinart, um, on behalf of the Ottawa Forum in Israel-Palestine, I'm delighted to have a few minutes of your time uh, this afternoon. Thanks very much for spending some time with us. My pleasure. Um, I'm sure that most of my um, viewers, subscribers will be a little bit familiar with, um, with Peter, who has been one of those um, American Jews who has been very involved in trying to pursue a serious discussion about um, uh, Canada and the and American uh, uh, view towards the Israel-Palestine question, and particularly the Jewish view of it. Um, Peter, I, I see you everywhere. I see you in the New York Times. I see you in CNN. I see you uh, debating in synagogues. One of the things that strikes me is that you're always, um, I don't, you're, you're, you're friendly, you're, 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 you're respectful, you're, you're trying to pursue a serious dialogue, even when you, sometimes your opponents, either directly or behind your back, are saying really quite malicious things about you. And I'd like to know, where, is that just Peter Beinart's personality, or is that part of a, um, a conscious move a, in order to try to move this issue forward? Well, I guess it stems in part just from the the reality that I'm live inside a community that um, with whom I'm often at odds, or I'm at odds with its kind of organized uh, institutions a lot of the time, um, and I'm at odds with not everybody in the community, but with a lot of people, including people who are who I have a lot of personal connections to, um, and um, and so I can't or don't would never want to sever those. Um, I wouldn't want to sever them and threaten them because first of all, I think it would be counterproductive in terms of changing people's minds. Um, but secondly, because those network of relationships are extremely important to me. Um, there it's kind of, again, it's the community in which I live and I can't really imagine not living in that community. Uh, I, um, and when I say living in that community, I meaning there are obviously more left-wing pockets in the American Jewish community, but I, I don't want to be living in those alone. Um, many of the things that I actually, particularly given my own religious inclinations, lead me to want to, to spend a lot of time in spaces and to, to, in fact, spend a lot of time in spaces where, where the politics are much more to the right, because there's a general kind of um, um, pattern in which you know, as you move closer to orthodoxy, orthodox Judaism, the politics tend to be further to the right. And since that's where I locate myself religiously, I have to to live uh, in such a community and 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 do my best to to be um, to be uh, you know to be uh, friendly and um, um, and develop close relationships and maintain those relationships. So I guess it's partly instrumental and it's partly it's partly self interest. Well, I find it quite remarkable that you've been able to do that. Well. In, from my perspective, maintaining a fairly principled critique of um, those positions that you don't agree with. So um, good on you for, for, for doing that. Peter, um, well, apart from, sorry, can say something? No, no, I mean, I, I, think that, um, I think that one of the critical, I mean, I, I, there are lots of, lots of ways in which I failed to do that, but I think that um, in, perhaps in, in, I think in, uh, in, the, in, 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 in the Jewish communities that I live in, and perhaps this is true for any community, I think what uh, people want to, people are more tolerant of criticism if they feel like you're kind of in it with them um, and you have their welfare, uh, that you care about their welfare. Um, and so I try to find ways, not always convincing to people, but I try to find ways of showing that that's the case for me. Sorry, go ahead. Peter, one of the things you, you in addition to is your public um, forays, like on CNN and New York Times and so on, you. You're involved in a number of uh, initiatives that I find quite interesting. And I'd like to ask you about uh, three of them that I'm sure. aware of. And the first one is you you run every Friday um, a kind of, um, I don't know how you would describe it, it's kind of like a round table um, where you're the center, but there's sometimes as many as, as few as 50 and sometimes as many as 120 people, depending on the, the day, on different topics. And you often have extraordinarily well-informed guests. Can you, Tell us a little bit. Often that that is on the Israel-Palestine issue, but not always. Uh, sometimes it's on other foreign policy or American um, uh, politics generally. But what what are you? What's your objective in that? Um, apart from having interesting conversations with very intelligent, well-informed people. Um, I guess part of it is is my response to the sense that the the Israel debate in the United States certainly 
in most Jewish spaces, and I think to some degree in, in, in kind of political and media spaces more generally, tends to be often pretty circumscribed. Um, Palestinians are often marginalized. It's changing a little bit, but I think still think Palestinians are marginalized. Um, and so um, Palestinian perspectives are often not present. Um, and what I wanted to try to do was try to experiment with creating a space where Palestinian perspectives would be present, uh, very strongly present, and, and also could interact with other perspectives so that there wouldn't be a kind of any, there wouldn't be the kind of litmus test that so often exists in which excludes Palestinians because they're not considered to be Zionists, but there also wouldn't be a litmus test on the other side so that actually um, people could kind of hear from a, a pretty broad spectrum of perspectives and kind of make their own sense of it. And one of the things that I've been really pleased about is that I think in the in the people who in the people who call in, in addition to the guests, we have some of that diversity. You know, we, there are a lot of American and other Jews whose views range a bit. And then there are Palestinians and, and other people. And I think that although the center of gravity is left, um, uh, probably in general, it's not monolithic. And um, and I hope that that allows various different people to experiment with, you know, to, to kind of think about how it lands with them to hear different perspectives that might not be totally their own. I'm, I've been impressed in that um, Wednesday, or Friday noon, not only by the breadth of the political perspectives from Omar Bargoudi or uh, Rashid Halidi on one end to uh, some fairly conservative uh, Jews on, on, on the other, um, but also in the depth of the people you've invited uh, are very knowledgeable. I mean, some of them have worked quite in deep in the Amer American administration or worked within APAC, and they yeah. bring a, um, an insight that mm -hmm. I wouldn't normally have, and I found very enriching. Um, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Well, that's, the, that's, that's certainly the goal. Now, another uh, initiative that you've been involved in, and I'm not sure how you came there, is Jewish Currents, which is, yeah. um, um, a, I think, a weekly magazine. At least I get it fairly frequently. I don't, I don't know what the frequency of it is. It's mostly directed at Jews, but I find it fascinating. And it, it tends to be left-wing Jews, but not yeah. left in the uh, Jewish Voice for Peace sense. It's a, and it, uh, I, don't, I don't know how you would describe the center of gravity of Jewish Currents, but maybe you can help us. And it's, yeah. by the way, I should have mentioned that first uh, round table is open to non-Jews and to Canadians as well. And I will put a link to it in the, in the website. So anybody who wants to, it, 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 you have to pay for it, but you get your money's worth in my view. So sorry, back on, on, on the Jewish curve. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, yes, no, and absolutely just to underscore that. I mean, I, I, although obviously for me, questions of Jewish identity are interlinked to questions of Israel, Palestine, I, I very, profoundly, um, you know, believe that this debate and this conversation uh, is one that must be open to everybody and that ev that many different people in different ways have their own equities and their own stake in it that needs to be respected and, and heard. Um, uh, the um, uh, Jewish Currents is a publication that was actually been around for quite a while, um, but was kind of revived in recent years by a group of people younger than me, kind of millennials, uh, um, who were frustrated by the fact that um, the American Jewish media landscape leaned, leans quite far to the right. Um, and I think wanted to experiment with a journalistic form that would challenge that discourse on Israel-Palestine, but also think about what it meant to write about Jewish culture um, and identity in ways that could be compatible with progressive political principles, um, again, which I think doesn't isn't really reflected in the Jewish media very much. And so I'm kind of the, the kind of old man on the staff in some ways. Um, uh, and um, but I, the um, I think the challenge is to um, is to make the uh, is to create a kind of high quality um, journalism and and kind of searching thought that can help to create a kind of a kind of intellectual and even moral insurgency against what I think is the moral corruption of the American Jewish establishment, and also model a, way, a kind of form of, of deeply kind of engaged and searching Jewish identity and culture, which, which does not rely on um, what is often, I think, uh, um, uh, tragically a kind, of a, a kind of discourse about Israel, which, which denies Palestinian humanity. You, uh, um, it is called Jewish Currents. I, I hear, I'm interested in, in hearing you describe that because as a non-Jew, 
Hmm. I find it more accessible than hmm. your description there would have led me to believe. Mm -hmm. I, I find it uh, um, uh, fascinating to, to see how these debates and discussions uh, progress. So um, don't want people to be non-Jews to be um, waved off it. Go on. No, no, no. Yeah. I certainly would not. No, in fact, we have Palestinian. We have Palestinian writers. We have other writers. I mean, it's certainly not a. It's you know people. I suppose people might have to be interested in in certain kind of questions of Jewish culture in order to perhaps find it interesting. But our hope is that we use those to get at universal sure, questions sure. on Israel, Palestine, and and beyond. So uh, Jewish Currents is um, free, I believe. I don't think I pay for that. I, uh, I don't know how it, it, it gets its money. I'm sure on the uh, website, it'll say how you how you can donate if you want to do so. I can't remember what the, the score is there. The last yes, one. Yes, you can. Right. Yeah, go ahead. The last um, uh, kind of discussion that I wanted to flag that you're in, deeply involved in is this organization called the Foundation uh, for Middle East Peace. Mm. Uh, I have done an interview with uh, Lara, uh, Lara Friedman some time ago about um, its objectives, but yes. um, just review for us what, what's it trying to do and what, what are you trying to do in it? So I think the Foundation for Middle East Peace is, is, is trying to um, influence the way that Israel-Palestine is discussed um, in Washington and beyond. Um, and one of the things that I've been work that they've been doing that I've I've worked on is trying to um, be a vehicle for bringing voices into the conversation that that are not currently part of it. I mean, as I was saying, I think that one of the fundamental problems is if you just look at that 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 um, Palestinians um, and people working on the ground for Palestinian rights don't really get much of a hearing uh, in Washington. And, um, and so a lot of things that I think if people really engaged with would could potentially shape the way they see this issue um, are just largely invisible. Um, so one of the things we've really tried to do at Foundation for Middle East Peace is through the grant work, make they they give grants to different organizations, and we through the podcasts that I've been doing with them, um, we try to have uh, discussions that will elevate their voices in their work, because I I think that there's a potential there, uh, for for that really to change the hearts and minds of of people in in Washington and beyond. And, and that that organization does have quite good contacts in yes. in the political level in Washington. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, listen, um, Peter, thank you for outlining that for us. I will also provide a link for the Foundation for Middle East Peace. I know once again, uh, they have a, a range of voices, including I think the last one was the webinar. You, you interviewed three Palestinians about the Nakba, right? There was a, um, yes. that, that was a very interesting um, uh, um, uh, webinar and they have lots of different webinars on different topics. Yeah. Peter, I'm gonna wind up there. Thank you so much for fitting some time uh, into your agenda. Thank and, you. Um, uh, let's keep in touch. Sounds good. Looking forward to it.